Greetings. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make the world's hardest blink example. Uh, I'm going to reference the data sheet quite a bit on here because I'm going to pretend that I've never touched the AT Mega 328, which is the chip on an Arduino. So if you ever want to follow along or look up stuff or check my uh, math, you can go on to these websites. The reason that I wanted to do this video is because I started working with an STM8 and it was pretty overwhelming to just jump right into things. There were a lot of new things that I never heard about and it turns out that they exist on the Arduino too, but the Arduino code base hides it all from you. Uh, and that's to make things much easier to learn. So I'm going to jump through all of this and hopefully it'll teach you a little bit more about the Arduino code base, but also give you some knowledge that you can take over to a different microcontroller. To understand this, there's two sections of memory that we need to look at. Uh, we've got flash memory, which is where your program lives, and RAM memory, which is where all of your temporary stuff lives, like your variables. An example, size that down, is if you create a variable like int i equals 69, then that exists at the chunk of user memory. Uh, and you can see that that starts at memory address 0x100, and addresses don't matter quite yet. Uh, but what is interesting is why is there so much empty space in memory before we get to where we can actually store variables. What are these registers? So the first chunk of memory up to 100 here are these registers. And a register is just like any other spot in memory. You can set it just like a variable. Uh, the only difference is that they have some sort of purpose to the microcontroller. Sometimes they'll control pins. Sometimes it'll control internal clock things. Uh, sometimes it's configurations but uh, you set it in the exact same way that you would set any other variable. One use for this is to control pins, turning pins on or off. Uh, so there is one specific register, which is an 8-bit number. Everything seems to be 8-bit because you have an 8-bit processor on your microcontroller. Uh, and you can set it to a number like 01000101, uh, which will turn on, in this case, pins 6, 2, and 1 on your Arduino. So this is not just a made-up example register. This actually has a name, uh, if you're curious. Not, we're going to use this one in particular. Uh, this is called port D. So if you set port D to some number, you're going to directly control pins 0 through 7 all at the exact same time. Uh, if you're ever curious which pins map out, you can take a peek at the Arduino pinout, which lists all of the digital pins, which are how Arduino references things. So maybe pin 8, for example, in... Uh, Arduino is really pin PB0 on the microcontroller side of things. So the ones that we just set were port D, which D0 through 7 uh, are also called port, port D0 through 7, so the, they line up nicely. So using that little bit of knowledge, is it possible to rewrite our code without using digital write? Normally you'd reference the pinout of the microcontroller itself uh, but in this case, we have a built-in LED on the Arduino, so we'll take advantage of that. And that's on pin 13, so we're not going to look at that. We're going to look at the Arduino pinout. Uh, we're going to check out where pin 13 is. D13 is right up here. And that lives on something called PB5. And PB5 means that it's port B, uh, which are those collection of uh, output pins. And it's specifically bit number 5. So if we wanted to turn on pin 13 or turn off pin 13, we really just have to set this magic variable called port B equal to some number that will cause it to turn on and off. And we care about bit 5 because it's PB5. Uh, so if we turn this to a 1 and leave everything else as a 0, then that translates in binary to 32. So if we set port B equal to 32, our LED should turn on. Uh, likewise, if we set port B to all zeros, specifically a zero at the fifth bit place, then that would cause pin 13 to turn off. Uh, one little note is be careful about setting things directly like this because you're controlling all eight uh, bits at once. You're turning on or off uh, everything all in one go. So if you previously had maybe this bit right here was on, and if we just set it equal to 32, we just killed it. So keep that in mind that we're not just changing one bit here. We're setting the whole thing. So let's go ahead and do this. Not a calculator. Uh, we've got digital write right here. Let's completely get rid of that. We have that variable uh, that is called port, port B. 
And all we have to do is set that to 32, which will turn on pin 13. And likewise, we will do port B equals zero to turn it off. So let's give that a shot. Make the screen bigger. Let's run some code. Ah, uh, no, we lost it. All right, so we've got our LED is now blinking. And just to prove that that actually worked, I'm going to make the delay two seconds for it to be on. So it'll be on for two seconds, off for one second, two seconds on, off, on, one, two, off, one. So that's where we're at there. Shrink that back down and jump back in. So why do this? Well, the whole purpose of this is to get rid of digital read, digital write, and all of the stuff that Arduino gives us. So we're understanding how the controller, the microcontroller itself uses this. However, even if you do stick with the Arduino IDE, this sometimes comes in handy. So if you were to write this with directly manipulating the port, turning it on and off as fast as you can, I measured this with an oscilloscope, and it can turn it on and off at a frequency of 2.7 megahertz. Uh, which is pretty quick, especially when you compare it to the digital write of Arduino's library code. So if I do a digital write high, digital write low, then it flickers it on and off at 148 kilohertz. And that's 100, and, or that's, sorry, that's 18.7 times faster if we control the port directly than using the digital write. And that's because, by all means, the digital write code is way easier to read, so they have to do a little bit of calculation in order to get it to turn on or off. So you're sacrificing uh, performance for readability and easiness to learn. So taking that same knowledge, can we also get rid of pin mode here, where we have uh, pin 13 set to an output? And the answer is yes, we can. So if we look at the same spot in the data sheet where we saw port B, which is up here at the top, uh, the one directly under it is something called DDRB. Uh, it stands, the DDR stands for Data Direction Register, and then the B means that it's on port B. So one of these exists for every port that there is, port A, port B, C, D. Uh, so changing port DD, or changing register DDRB will change the direction of it. And what does that mean? Lucky for us, they give us a nice write-up right underneath it in the data sheet. Uh, part we care about is down here in red. If DDXN, uh, meaning a specific bit that's on here like DDB6 or DDB5, so if we set that to a 1, then the pin is configured as an output, and if we set it to a 0, then it's configured as an input. So if we want our pin 13, which is PB5, to be an output, that means that we just need to set DDRB to have a 1 in the bit 5 place. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So let's get rid of this. Pin mode, gone. DDRB, so data direction register, specifically for port B, equals 32. And as a reminder, that is 00100000. So the bit 5 is on, which sets, sets bit 5 as output, or PB5, PB5 as output. Let's go ahead and try that code out. So I will upload it here. Watch our LED. It's on, off. On for two seconds, off for one second. So it still seems to be working fine. If you're curious and you set DDRB to zero, that means that everything would be an in input. Uh, you can actually watch the LED still flicker slightly just because of how the internals of it work. Um, but let's see. Can you see it flicker at all? No, we're not seeing it flicker. Sometimes you can still see it flicker even when it's set as an input pin, but it's very dim. Uh, but in this case, everything looks normal. Uh, it's an input pin, so we shouldn't be able to control it. Let's set that back to 32 and re-upload that code so it's blinking again. Next thing that we're gonna do is get rid of that delay function that's in there. So we've got port B to turn the pin on and off, DDRB to set the input or output mode of the pin. Uh, but what about delay? So delay is really complicated if you want it to wait for a very specific amount of time. Uh, but for us, we're just gonna delay for some amount of time that is makes, makes it easy for a human to see the blink. 
my gut reaction was to do a for loop that was really long that did nothing uh, in order to trick it into busy waiting uh, for a certain amount of time, but unfortunately the compiler was smarter than me. The compiler looks at this and it sees that nothing is happening and it says that's a lot of dead code. I'm going to save you some time by optimizing that out of the way. We'll just remove that since it actually does nothing in the long run. It's like, aren't you happy with me? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not happy now because now I have no way of delaying. Normally it's better when it speeds up your code bit by bit when, you're, when you want it to be fast, but in our case we're trying to make it slow. Uh, so what we need to do is we have to outsmart the compiler by making it execute lots and lots of code in a way that it doesn't think that it's allowed to optimize it out of the way. There's a million ways to do this. I'm just going to do it this way for this video. Uh, I'm just sticking some code in here. We're setting a register equal to the same value over and over and over again. And the reason that the compiler doesn't optimize this out is because it doesn't really understand the registers. It doesn't know what can change the registers because it's hardware. For all it knows, I could press a button and that could change the value. So if I tell it to write the value 32 over and over and over again, it just does it without question and it won't optimize this out. Uh, you can't put a normal variable in here because just like before, the compiler will see a normal variable that gets set to the same value over and over again, and it's smart enough to say, I don't need to do this one million times. I could probably just do it once. So let's do that too. Let's get rid of our delay function here. Do a for long i equals zero. And we do long because an integer can't represent a number up to a million, I don't think. I plus plus gives us a long a longer delay time possible. So port B equals 32. That's kind of redundant code to the line above it, but such is life. Long I equals zero, I is less than one million I plus plus. And in this case, port B equals zero. So we're just doing some busy waiting here. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. I will upload the code. There's our LED, blink, blink, blink. So it's blinking a lot faster than it was before. Uh, one million is, I, I just pulled that number out of thin air. Uh, you can make it whatever you want for this case, but we're creating an artificial delay. All right, well, that's it for this video. I was gonna have it be a bit longer, but uh, the next section, which is controlling memory directly by its address, tends to get a little bit lengthy, and I wanted to keep these videos in a bite-sized format. Uh, I also just reviewed this video clip and I realized that my typing was really loud, so I apologize about that. Uh, I'm pretty new to making these videos, so if you have any other tips or tricks on how to make these better, maybe go faster or slower or touch up on something I breezed over, please let me know and I'll try to make them better. But until then, I'll see you next time.